Anvil Aerospace. All systems online. Greetings, citizens of the verse. This is Sir Six here with yet another episode of an avionics technician's guide. My professional experience between the MV-22 Osprey and now the 737 at the Boeing Company has made me enjoy analyzing ships within the game. Now, without further chatter, I digress. The Anvil Valkyrie, a premier medium dropship that can be used for close air support or combat utility operations. Today we'll be doing a pre-fight walk around, an internal walk around in conjunction with the weapons package, reviewing the flight deck, analyzing flight performance, and wrapping up the video with tactics. Let's begin. To me, it is as if the Valkyrie is a mix between the CH-53 Kilo Super Stallion and the UH-1 Venom. My reasoning behind this is because the 53 is primarily a heavy lift platform, able to not only carry Marines into battle, but also drop off necessary weapons and vehicles, and also has three hard points for mounted guns, able to provide cover for troops and the aircrew themselves and the Venom because it's literally a modern day gunship. And now before you say it, a gunship doesn't have to be death from above as we all know the AC-130 is. The Valkyrie can strafe soft targets and lighter armor vehicles to assist with troop movement and protection. Let's get a closer look and discuss the ship as we start our pre-flight walk around. Taking a look at the ship, we see a lot of engine intakes with a grid-like design on either side of the ship. I like this because aircraft in general, when you land in dirt environments, your engines are prone to having objects being ingested into them, or FOD. FOD is foreign object debris or foreign object damage. So to me, it seems like this is a layer of protection to assist in the longevity of the ship and reduce engine degradation. Continuing our walk around, we see our engines on either side front and aft, encasing the nacelles that rotate the thrusters that keep this war machine in the air. VTOL thrusters play a huge role when it comes to carrying heavy items. I'm not sure if CIG will make troop weight added mass to the ship like real pilots in the military have to account for along with any other cargo in the aircraft. But anyway, these thrusters is what makes this ship capable, so if you lose one, it's going to be a really bad day. The small wing-like structure between the nacelles do not seem like they will help you if you lose an engine. Not to mention the engine themselves are rather large and emit a decent amount of EM and IR signature, making you an easy target to lock and fire on. As we proceed, I like to point out the twin tail design on the back end of the ship. It reminds me of the A-10. The twin tail surface of the A-10 hides the engine exhaust from ground-based IR sensors as well as along the hull and main wings, protecting them from weapon fire from the ground. It can also act as a redundancy if you lose a vertical stabilizer, you still have one left. Now to be clear, rather than having the rudder on the vertical stabilizer for yaw input, a vert stab also allows the plane to fly straight without swaying side to side without pilot input. Just below the epinage, at the aft end of the ship, we also have the vehicle ramp that can allow up to an Ursa rover into the vehicle bay. The bay itself is a wide open cabin that is a main loading point for both the grunts and their ground transportation. As we walk in, you will notice the cargo nets on either side of the ship. It is intended for extra supplies and tools, but as of right now, it only serves as looks, no overall purpose. Toward the back of the vehicle bay, we have a blast shield similar to a carrier's, redirecting the heat and thrust away from ground personnel. And not too far off we also have personal lockers that are pretty much useless at this time. To either side of the ship we also have the main egress doors when dropping off troops into a combat zone. The door themselves are used for rapid deployment. Notice how they are close to the troop bay. The door itself is a traditional sliding door that moves alongside of the ship. The turret is placed at the front end of the door so troops do not walk into the firing line. I feel like the turret will be used for loitering above because the turret cannot look directly in front of the ship like the two remote turrets can. Moving away from the external doors we have the troop area with seats and weapon racks for the grunts. And at the very end of the troop container 
we have our first aircrew fighting position, a bomb turret that has 360 degree fire support. The primary role of this turret is to either assist the pilot with firepower to the front, to assist a remote turret to the firepower to the given flank, and to assist the pilot when landing because the pilot has little to no visibility below them. Making our way up the glitchy ladder, we enter the crew area, including the five beds and a berthing. We also see yet another crew station being the top turret. The primary role of the turret is to keep the skies above clear and assist with maximum firepower to the front if the pilot needs assistance. Or can also assist the flanks if you circle the area. Note you will need to tilt the ship so the turret can have a clear shot at a ground target. As we enclose on the flight deck we also see yet two more crew stations on either side of the ship. These are the remote turrets, both on either side located on the stub wing. The turret itself is designed to assist with firepower to the front to assist the pilot, firepower to the given flank as needed with both the bottom turret and the door gunner, to engage anything in the ship's blind spot, and most importantly to provide covering fire for troops when egressing out of the ship's side doors. With all of the turret hardpoints covered, we finally make our way to the flight deck itself. What I love about the flight deck is the door behind it with the hand scanner. This keeps the pilot to themselves without anyone bothering them. Because once it's go time, it's the pilot's responsibility to make sure that the precious cargo makes it to its destination. So no distractions, no curious backers wanting to take a look and ask questions when you're trying to do the job at hand. The MV-22 had a door just behind the flight deck as well, and during long flights, the door would be closed. Now that we have finally gotten into the seat that the controls this aircraft, we are confronted with four out of the six flight displays. I actually like this because I'm not forced to free look and move my head away from the view of me flying just to adjust something. I can put the necessary displays on the front four MFDs and keep the other two MFDs with information that's not mainly for flying. For all of you who do not know what an MFD is, it is a multifunctional flight display. At least that is what it was called on the V-22. Everyone has different acronyms and jargon for this screen, but all they mean is a flight display for the pilot and that is what is important. The irony about the flight deck overall is that it is reversed of what you would think of. The top of the ship is all glass and the bottom is all armor and poor visibility. All you have is a glory hole between your legs that gives you a nice view of your crotch and minimal view of the ground. Most modern day troop transports that are helos have glass so you can see where you are landing. But as I have mentioned before, the bottom turret has the job to make sure the landing zone is clear of objects. Now, with our walk around complete, along with our flight deck analysis, let us take to the skies. I'll see you in the air. In atmospheric conditions, the ship feels like a brick and I believe it will be even more sluggish as of 3.5. Overall, the ship has a decent quantum jump range and a reliable max true speed when it is used on afterburner. But with all that said, the Valkyrie has very, very poor hydrogen fuel characteristics. To conserve fuel, for me personally, I only use afterburner when I'm dropping troops off and then rapidly recovering out of the atmosphere. Remember, Using afterburner also increases your total signature, so use it sparingly. Now let's talk about tactics. As for tactics, I have mentioned this in my gunship and dropship video, but I will say it again. A ship like this needs to be played to its strengths. You need to have a crew of five to work at maximum potential. If you are going to provide close air support and you do not have all your turrets manned, you are potentially hurting yourself and putting your troops and vehicles at risk. 
I personally do not see many people putting 20 grunts in this ship. I see it being used to drop off a vehicle and loitering above troops. However, larger orgs may see fit to this with proper escorts. But again, it just may seem like an overall risk. Your tactics though, so it's your decision. Another important thing that was overlooked was the fact it cannot carry cargo. And to be very clear, most military troop transports can carry some form of cargo. Not a lot, but still some. So what is the point of the cargo nets if you can't even use them? CIG, please, if you see this, this thing needs at least 5-9 to nine SCU, for the purpose of crew needs for the least, and to give some supplies to the grunts if needed, or extra parts for the ship itself. And lastly, I like to see rocket pods be able to be equipped, for either the pilot or the ground turret to assist with softer armored targets. Overall, I have had some great feedback for the series, and I love to hear yours. I'm always trying to push myself and create contact that is more than just stating facts. It's to help people figure out what role they want to play, and if the ship in question really fits the niche they desire. Once again, I would like to hear your thoughts. Let's continue the discussion in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, then tell me what ship you would like to see next. I personally thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. It really does mean a lot. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button and share it with others. If you are new, feel free to subscribe for more content. I'll be doing more ships like this daily. But with that being said, I will see you on the flip side.